Uh, damn sorceress. That damn sorceress. Four starting prawns, Nilfgaard. Ah, not Nilfgaard, Northern Realms. I keep getting that like NG mix up. If there's a cursed unit on this unit's row, deal seven damage. Uh, it's just like that previous unit. It has this really big caveat. Display Alger's Thunder. This is bad. Moving on. Wait, let's let's like it has to be if there's a cursed, a cursed unit on this unit's row. That it's I'm assuming it doesn't just count itself, right? Because that'd be stupid. It's just like oh, as long as this unit is alive <laughs> when it comes into play, deal the uh, seven damage. Mage, is it being mage beat? Oh. Uh -huh. Maybe this uh, this seems really bad at it. Like the, both this and the previous card seem really bad at the base level. But again, we need to be able to see this in action. Maybe there's cards that come up. Maybe there's cards existing that I'm not really thinking about. But for now, I don't think it's very powerful. Uh, alpha Werewolf. Man, this is the Alpha Man right here. 10 strength, bronze, monster. Spun a wolf on either side if oh, if played into Moonlight. I thought, man, that's really strong for a bronze unit. And this also leads to swarming. Uh, it needs to be played in Moonlight. I still don't know what Moonlight is. I'm assuming it's some kind of like... Either it's either a one row effect or it's a board wide effect. Uh, kind of like uh, I think Magic the Gathering had some kind of cards like that where you'd play it off to the side and it kind of affect everything all the time. So it's either some kind of weather or it's a row effect. In that sense, if you do like if you can get Moonlight, if Moonlight isn't very cumbersome to get out, I think this is really powerful. 12 strength with uh, the upside of swarming crazy. All right, and finally, we're at the last section for today. This is only 66 out of 110 cards. Crazy. Curse Knight, Bronze, 8 Strength, no, uh, Northern Realms. Transform a Cursed Ally into a copy of this unit. So you play that one Cursed unit from before, and then you play this, and you give it 4 Strength. Maybe there's some kind of Cursed Archetype that could rise up. I still think this is weak. Because it's not, like, it's not just, like, this is like 12 strength, but you need to have something already on the field and you're you're taking away the strength from that. Oh, this seems just bad. This seems bad. We'll move on though. Like if there's a this would only be placed next to some kind of like entirely cursed archetype. But even within that, it doesn't seem that strong. Slave Hunter. Charm a bronze enemy with three power or less. Bronze charm will allow you to basically take it from one side and move it over to your side. A bronze enemy with three power or less. Are there any particular cards that you would want to bring over? This is going to be like 11 strength on average. No, no, this is 11 strength at best. And you're taking away a unit. No, no, but this is six because you're taking it away and you're gaining it. So, okay, this is pretty strong. This is really strong. But the problem is it needs to be more than... It would need to be reliably more than one, one strength. Maybe you, you charm... Like a spy back to your side, interesting. I don't really like. This is a very base level. This is a, at a base level. It's very good. I mean, it's it's good. And then we'll, it, I need to see it in action for it to be really good, or really bad maybe. Siren, four strength bronze monster. Summon. Oh, here's moonlight. Special hazard boon. Choose one. Apply a full moon boon or apply a blood moon hazard. So I'm, I imagine full moon boon, a <laughs> full moon boon. That's tongue twister i imagine that's uh like a board wide effect or a blood moon hazard is on your opponent's side that will do damage maybe or something like that summon moonlight summon moonlight so you put this card out you run three of these you summon moonlight and then you play all your cards after it and it has a four strength body attached to it and you get the full moon i think like moonlight archetype is gonna be a pretty big thing or at least it's gonna be some see some good experimentation this seems strong enough to be a Good card in that. I mean, it's the card that's going to be in that. That makes it work. Uh, whether or not the Moonlight archetype as a whole is strong is, remains to be seen. But this card by itself, summoning Moonlight, based on what I've seen before, and what you get from having Moonlight, seems strong. Elven Scout, two strength, bronze, Skotel. Spawn a bronze Skotel unit that is not in your starting deck. Spawn it. This seems really bad. At a glance, moving on. I would have, this is the card that entirely has to be seen in a specific deck to see exactly how well this works. But at a base level, it seems bad. Clan Protector. Play a bronze item from your deck. It's only two strength. You're getting a bronze item. You are thinning it out of your deck. Interesting. I would have to see what kind of bronze items they want to get out of their deck. But otherwise, I don't think it's all that powerful. 
Nivellen. I mean, at a base level, you are you're pulling it, you're pulling a card and playing it, and you're thinning your deck, and you get a unit, and you have a unit that you can pull with the soldier tag, and you're swarming your your side of the board, so maybe you get some damage off. I mean, you can get some boosts off. I did see it in action, but it's not that bad. It's not bad, but I don't think it's good yet either. Nivellen, <laughs> this is really good card art. Ten strength, silver, neutral. Move all units on a row to random row. To random rows. This is the kind of card you play when you're playing a lot of gold weather. In that sense, I think it'd be really good. But only within that archetype. You would have to be playing gold weather. Or playing a very weather heavy deck. Or playing well harpooners. But basically that's synonymous. I think this is really powerful within that particular subset of restraints. Goliath, 10 power, boost self by 6. Whenever this unit is damaged, deal 2 damage to self. Oh, that's bad. Oh, but it's not that bad. If you can save this for like a last like a finisher, that's crazy. It's 16 strength silver. But if you play it early, it's bad. This is the kind of guard that I really like because it's uh, it's entirely reliant on when you as a player is able to play it most effectively. If you play it too early, it's going to end up being an A strength silver, which is bad. But if you can play it like in a very uh, favorable situation for yourself, it's going to be a 16 strength. So it's it's either you're good at the game and you play it well, or you're bad at the game and you play it poorly. Or the other side of that, you uh, you have to play the situation which is not good for maybe some other kind of like risk or bluff or otherwise. Or you play it in a situation um, that doesn't have any downside whatsoever. Like if it's the very last card of the game. And this is really strong. I actually want to play this card like right now because I think this card is incredible. It's kind of like, again, like one of the things that make Gwent great is being able to play cards like this. That is entirely reliant on your own skill as the player and getting uh, its value out. I think this is actually my favorite card of the set so far. That's a really cool card. This is actually may even be too powerful. We'll see. Maybe I'm overestimating just how much. I don't really deal because you're only dealing deal. You're only dealing two damage to self when you get hit. You'd have to get hit twice for this to be less than good. And how often are you getting hit more than once, right? Not often. How often do you get hit once at all? Like, you're sure there's going to be a bit of a lightning rod for damage. But even still, like, the damage has to go somewhere. And if dealing a little bit more damage to yourself gives this big of an upside, I think it's worth it. Ruhin, strengthen all your insectoid. And Christine is better one wherever they are. Interesting. So if you can, you need to be able to reliably pull this first, so you can get that buff on everything. All insectoid and Christine is by one. This is monsters. How many insectoid or Christians are there in monsters? Actually, not all that much, huh? I think we're playing a very specific insect and cursed insect insectoid or curse yet. Eh, man, my fat tongue. If you're playing insectoid or cursed deck. Then and or rather and this will be really powerful but otherwise i don't think it's i don't think it's anything crazy giant boar man there's so many of these destroy a random ally then boost self by 10 destroy a random ally then boost self by 10 then boost self by 10 so boosting yourself isn't very good but you have to destroy a random ally so in that sense i don't like this card at all Actually, I think this card is bad because it has to be random. But if you know, but th doesn't this go back to that one previous situation where I said this is a, between a good player and a bad player being able to play in uh, a certain aspect where they know they get the guaranteed value off. So if you can reliably hit like a two or one strength unit, then you get a 17 strength bronze. But like, I feel like hitting a random ally is so that can be so difficult to really to get Ah, random. I don't like random. I think that's the problem. I don't like random. Like, sure, you can manipulate this in such a way. This doesn't like you can't even use this like as a final card in round three or something like that because you have to either play it before you have units or you have to play it after a unit that potentially has like eight strength or something, right? I don't like this card. Uh, I think the big key word here is random, and I don't like random. I think random is too unreliable. Like, you can make it reliable in a sense, but I don't think you're able to manipulate it. As much as you think you'd be able to, I think this card ends up hitting like hurting yourself. 
more like this is taking a silver taking into uh into account yeah this is taking up a silver slot i think this is hurting yourself more than you're actually helping yourself but hey maybe if you reliably if you have a deck that's just filled with very very low strength cards and maybe this is the card that's excellent in that but otherwise i don't think this is a card you can just play in any deck and like oh i'm just gonna get the value off right and that's not gonna happen whereas the uh, previous card i mentioned i think is uh Polly dahlberg resurrect a non-support bronze dwarf if you're playing a lot of dwarfs, maybe this is a card you want to put in there. I'm not really sure about the dwarf archetype. I'm just going to move on. Also, this is getting really long. Re, Reem, Reem Day? Spawn a Bronze of Guardian Soldier. If you're playing it, again, this is just another card. Like, if you're playing a Bronze of Guardian Soldier deck and you need the tutor one of those out with the silver card, then maybe this is what you want. I think the, the silver body is a little bit weak. But maybe uh, your Bronze of Guardian Soldiers are good enough that you are willing to take that downside but otherwise of course outside of this particular archetype it's going to be useless mahakam horn spawn a bronze or silver dwarf or strengthen the unit by seven so strengthening the unit by seven is terrible you never want that well it does say strengthen ah it does say strengthen so if you're playing like a like a mahakam dwarf then you're going to strengthen it by seven instead of boosting which means it goes into the next round seven more strength because it uh, resets the strengthened boost ah okay i think this is a must play in a dwarf deck then in a carryover dwarf deck i think that's really strong in that aspect like like i can't even enunciate how much like strength versus boost and like how big of a difference like i'd almost equate strength and to, uh, to being double data boost so it's not strengthening by seven or it is strengthening by seven but it's almost like it's boosting by 14 in other words and and uh if you don't have anything on the field you can spawn a bronze over dwarf and you get to choose. You get to discover it. So I think this is really incredibly powerful in a dwarf deck. Uh, Portcullis. Spawn a bronze or silver unit for your opponent's starting deck and boost it by two. Bronze or silver unit. So you get to pick it. Bronze or silver and boost it by two. And boost it by two. Again, like, why not just play the good cards in your deck? Is boosting it by two is not really... It doesn't matter. Uh, and if you want to steal a card from your, what your opponent's playing, then you play Summoning Circle. I think this is bad. Olaf. Wow, look at that. It's <laughs> a gold 20 strength Skalga. Deal damage to self. Reduce the damage inflicted by two for each beast you played this match. Deal 10 damage to self. Reduce the damage inflicted by two beasts you played. So this is kind of like, wow, this is a, an absolutely insane like last card in round three kind of card i think this is a must play in a beast deck actually beast deck is probably gonna be a big thing this card is so massively powerful and if you're playing this like as a last card in round three it's not gonna get like igni scorch or anything like that assuming you have the last card wow this card is insane i think this is going to make the entire beast archetype by itself assuming there are enough beasts I think there should be. You only need to play like five beasts. Yeah, you only need to play a total of five beasts in an entire match to get this at full 20 strength. And even if you don't, let's say you get like four, you're still getting a 16 strength gold that you play as the last card on round three. That's incredible. I think it's really powerful. Uh, Shillard. <laughs> Shillard. Nilfgaard. Nine strength gold. Truce. Draw a card from both decks. Keep one and give the other to your opponent. Ah, interesting. I mean, more more often than not, though, aren't you just going to pick your own card because it fits more with your deck? So it's basically each each player draws a card. So it's like a half Avalak. So this is like another mill. This is an, an addition to the mill deck. I think it's only going to be played in mill. No, not necessarily. It could be mill slash disruption, but like the gold cards in Nilfgaard are pretty competitive. So I think it'd pretty much only be played in mill. But otherwise, I think this is an interesting concept. Uh, then again, though, I don't really like cards that allow you to take away from your, to allow you to disrupt your opponent's cards, like both in their hand or their deck. Eh, we'll see. I think it's interesting, though. Uh, Vander Grift. Wow, this is a really cool card art. Uh, damage all enemies by one. That'd be really useful in Skellica. If a unit is destroyed, apply Ragnarok to its row. What the hell? This is crazy. If a unit is destroyed, apply Ragnarok to its row. Wow. 
Wow. So you can, if you do one damage to each row, you have a full Ragnarok for free on a seven strength gold body and you're damaging everything by one. I think this card is insanely powerful, especially against Swarm. If you like, this is the card that will break Swarm. Now, wow, this card is insane. That card is so good. Even if you're just getting one row, let's say you damage like three enemies by one and you kill one, you're getting a, a 10 strength gold body with Ragnarok on one row. And usually you want, you want, it's going to be on one row anyway, right? Because they're going to consolidate all the units to one row. Excuse me. I think this card's great. I think it's really powerful. And also, I don't think uh, Northern Realms gold cards are all that competitive, so you can definitely slot this in. Siri Nova. I really miss Siri, man. I want Siri to come back into the meta. If you have exactly two copies of each bronze in your starting deck, set power to 25. What the hell? Exactly in your starting deck? Set power to 25? What? How is this not broken? How is this not entirely broken? Having exactly two copies of a bronze card is easy, right? I mean, you lose some consistency in your deck. <coughs> Excuse me, in your deck. But if you're like, this just seems crazy. This seem, this card seems way too powerful. It says set power to 25, so I'm assuming that's not just a boost. What the hell? That seems entirely broken. <laughs> just from a, like at a glance. Maybe I'm underestimating how difficult it is to play a deck with just exactly two copies of each bronze. But that seems absolutely insane. Like, like especially in like a machine deck, like a Northern Realms machine deck or something like that, where they play lots of cards anyway. This card seems absolutely insane. And like, if you can roll to create this, or if you can play that one card that I mentioned before that allows you to spawn a copy of a unit in your deck, and that becomes 25 strength, this card seems broken. It's, I'm going to say it. I think this card seems broken, but it also, I think it just became my favorite card in the whole set. <laughs> There's a lot of synergy in this set so far. We're only halfway through and this like the set seems crazy. Um, I'm not gonna be able to keep up with all this. Like each deck is getting like a huge archetype, or it's getting neutral cards like this that entirely change like the metagame. I think this card looks broken. We're gonna move on though. We'll see how it goes in practice. Uh trial of the grasses. Deal damage to a unit. Unless it's a Witcher. If it survives, boost to 25 power. What the hell? <laughs> what is with these cards? Deal 10 damage deal 10 damage to a unit unless it's a Witcher. So you can't work on a Witcher. So that means you can't use it on a uh, Geralt. Which would which would be a relatively easy target to hit. If it survives, boost to 25. I think if you can, boost it, this could even be used against an enemy. I think just with that, I already thought it was powerful. Like, oh my, this is so powerful, though. Okay, there's that one griffin in Monsters, right? You play the guy with the griffin, you deal the damage, and then you boost it to 25. And you gain this. Oh, but then it only becomes like a 13. Like, this is at most a 14 strength gold card. So maybe it's not that good. Yeah, I think the, the condition is too high. And what you're getting is actually, it seems like, whoa, 25 strength. That's incredible. But you're only really getting like 14 strength. So in that sense, I don't think it's going to be played. But it is interesting. Add a spawn like like on average, gold cards are supposed to be like around twelve to f one. They're supposed to be around thirteen to like seventeen strength. Uh, like thirteen on the lower end, seventeen on the higher end, and this is kind of like smack dab in the middle. But I think the condition is way too high. Like if you're looking for a Gold card that gives you a fair amount of gold strength. Display Tris, Tris Marigold and Geralt. And Geralt, both of those are basically the same thing. Like this is basically matching. This should be boosted, I think, to 30 power instead. With that with that condition. But maybe you're playing some kind of deck that can somehow take advantage of that 25 power and apply it to your other units like Nilfgaard. We'll see. I think it's either a very specific deck archetype card or it's not played at all. Add a spawn of bronze or silver curse unit. If you're trying to tutor out your curse units, then this is the card for you. Otherwise, I don't like it. And last card. Relict. Leader. Spawn an organic card. Don't know what the organic card is. It be oh, this is a leader. Wait a second. Is this a leader too? Oh. Oh. This is a, this is a leader. This is a, no a Northern Realms leader. 
the first one I've seen. Also, this guy has a lot of a lot of uh, ore and dust and everything. How does he have all that much and only be level forty six? What the hell? How do you do? How does he have one hundred seventy eight? Oh, you know what? This is probably the uh, from taken from the stream. Ada. So this is the the new Northern Realms leader, which means you'd be able to get this out reliably, which makes that cursed archetype an actual real thing. Spawn a bronze or silver curse unit. How good is that? I think if you're playing that cursed archetype, then you're always going to put this in, but otherwise I don't think it's that strong. Like, even in that in that deck archetype, where it, you either do or you don't, right? So it's not in a sense that it's good or bad. It's that you play it or you don't play cursed. But the power within that is remains to be seen based on what cursed units come out. You are spawning it, though, which means it's a somewhat random effect. Does that mean... We'll have to see. Whispering Hillock. Spawn an organic card. This is another, this is a relic leader. I don't like this card art. Like, what is this? What am I looking at here? <laughs> a horse? Is the horse leader? Uh, it has to be, it is relic. So that means you play it on a relic dead, probably. I don't know what an organic card is. In that sense, I'd have to see what they are. Or if they have already seen it, then I don't remember. It seems weak at a base level. And that's it. All right, uh, an hour and two minutes. Insane. I'll probably break this up into three parts or so. So it's a little bit more palatable. So that's the set this far. That's only 60 out of 111. <laughs> Insane. Make sure to check back for more of those. Thanks for watching.